Here in the second month of 2014, you may be surprised, or not, to learn that about 40% of Americans' New Year's resolutions from this year are now next year's New Year's resolutions. The most common resolution of 2014, according to the Journal of Clinical Psychology, is losing weight, with the fifth most being staying fit and healthy, I assume involves some kind of eating a healthier diet. While I won't go into some of the issues I have with the standalone resolution of losing weight, I will say that eating a healthy diet is very different than dieting in this land of fad and yo-yo dieting. But I digress, back on topic. I think people are fairly aware with the fact that medications can interact with each other, though they're probably usually thinking of prescription meds and not over-the-counter meds, which leads to the Tylenol dilemma of our healthcare system. Some people may even be aware that certain drugs can mess with how vitamins are absorbed, such as how acid inhibitors like Prilosec and Zantac can actually prevent the absorption of vitamin B12. A lack of vitamin B12 has been linked to anemia and nerve damage and dementia and is unfortunately rather common in the older population. Others may have heard somewhere that antibiotics can decrease the efficacy of birth control, though it's really only the hormonal birth control and even then it's only the rifampicin-like antibiotics, which are used for things like TB and certain strains of meningitis. However, many people may be unaware that there are a variety of rather common food options, usually seen as healthy options, that can actually interfere with different medications. One that people might have actually heard something about is grapefruit juice, which can interfere with blood pressure meds, certain anti-organ rejection meds, anti-anxiety meds, anti-malarial medications, anti-insomnia medications, and even certain statins for cholesterol control. Because angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors are potassium-sparing diuretic, means that it lowers your blood pressure by getting rid of water but keeping potassium, which means things like bananas that are high in potassium can lead to dangerously high levels of potassium in the blood, which can cause all kinds of problems for your heart. Things like oranges, leafy greens, and salt substitutes can actually also have potassium in them that can cause this issue. Kale and all of its siblings, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, spinach, and cabbage are high in vitamin K, which can cause issues if you're taking blood thinners like warfarin or coumadin, same thing. They can actually reduce the anti-clotting effects of those drugs. Black licorice and licorice extract can actually have something in it that affects different heart medications, blood pressure medications, birth control, all kinds of different stuff. And those licorice root supplements for heartburn, those have it too. Milk can actually interfere with tetracycline antibiotics, and it has to do with the calcium in the milk preventing the absorption of the drug. So that includes other things that have high calcium as well, not just milk. Things that are aged, pickled, fermented, or smoked can have too much tyramine in it, and that can interfere with different types of antibiotics. Things like salami, or pickles, or anchovies, a dry sausage, sometimes in avocados, and bananas, and chocolate, and booze, it's in lots of stuff. Walnuts and other things high in fiber, like soybean flour and cottonseed meal, can actually prevent the uptake of thyroid medications. Most people know that mixing alcohol with medications is probably not a good idea. Again, medications usually processed in the liver and it's hard on your liver and it can increase the residency time of the drug in your system or it can make it so that it's not as effective or tons of different reasons. Chocolate can actually interact with monoamine oxidase inhibitors, which are used to treat depression. It can actually cause a blood pressure spike, a dangerous blood pressure spike when used with these drugs. This is similar to that aged thing where different aged cheeses and sausage and bologna and things like that can also have similar effects. And the caffeine, whatever you're eating, drinking, but it is in chocolate, so caffeine can increase the effects of Ritalin or decrease the effects of things like Ambien, which you can have probably figured out on your own. So one of the things that I think are a little bit more nefarious because people really don't think about them as far as interacting, supplements. Vitamin E, for example, can amplify the effects of blood thinners like Coumadin, increasing the risk of bleeding, whereas vitamin K can have the opposite effect, actually decreasing the effect of the drug. Ginseng has similar effects on the blood as vitamin E, but it can also work with other drugs such as heparin, aspirin, even over-the-counter stuff like ibuprofen and naproxen. And with the MAO inhibitors mentioned earlier, it can cause insomnia, headaches, nervousness, and hyperactivity. High doses of ginkgo biloba can actually decrease the effectiveness of anti-seizure medications. And the big one that interacts with so many things Things is St. John's wort. St. John's wort acts as a liver enzyme activator. So it activates a couple different types of enzymes that then go to work on these drugs. They can actually decrease the level of the drugs in your blood so much that they're no longer effective. Because there's a big long list, I'm just going to read them off of my computer. Antiretrovirals used to treat HIV and AIDS. 
benzodiazepines used to treat anxiety and seizures, hormonal contraception, immunosuppressants, antiarrhythmics for abnormal heart rhythms, beta blockers for heart diseases, calcium channel blockers for blood pressure, statins to lower cholesterol, and many others. In combination with different types of drugs, it can actually lead to an increase in serotonin and even the life-threatening serotonin syndrome. These drugs include different types of antidepressants, opioids, central nervous system stimulants, serotonin agonists, different psychedelic drugs, and things like lithium and tryptophan. So yeah, if you're in the over 50% of Americans who take dietary supplements, make sure you actually check these things out before you combine them with any of your drugs you may be on, or before going on any new drugs. Tell your doctor. These healthy, all-natural supplements aren't as regulated as you might think, so be sure to check very specifically. As far as healthy eating goes, while the idea that you should be able to pronounce everything that's in your food might not be the best rule of thumb, I'll say at least kind of know what's going into your body and especially if you have different conditions that you might be taking meds for, things might react with it. So check out your meds. I would always support a healthier lifestyle, just make sure you do it safely. I'll see you next time.